Good morning. Welcome to the uh, October 11th um, meeting of the Board of Assessors. Two of our assessors are remote, Gary being the principal assessor, and Tom Stokes is also remote. And Michael, you want to run it? Yep. Okay, so um, last week's minutes, there are three things on this agenda that are carried over from that meeting. The first one being number two, update on the fiscal year 23 preliminary certification. Um, as of last Thursday, I, I finally am in review with the DOR. Joe um, Barberi called and went over the work, started going over the work plan. He said he was gonna work on it this weekend. And I'm sure when I get back to the office, there will be a message um, going over our statistics. Once that's done, then it gets submitted to the higher ups and I'm hoping by the end of the week, we have a final decision. But in the meantime, because I'm panicking on the public disclosure aspect of it, because we need to get mailers and you know in the mail and um, run our spreadsheet that has all the new values. I asked him, well, actually I didn't even ask him, while we were talking about the um, work plan and things, I said, um, is it, well, he said to me, he's like other communities are actually sending out their, basically their public disclosure notice without having preliminary certification, which is fine because not, not, you know, it basically just says we're in preliminary certification. This is the process that we're going through. Here's your new value. Here's your old value. Here's the date that you can inquire about it. It doesn't matter whether you're in preliminary or final because we're not doing hearings. We're just doing notices that are gonna be going out and we're not required to put the um, legal notice in the paper anymore. They did away with all of that. Same goes for the classification hearing. As long as your local um, postings. postings are done properly, then that, that satisfies the state's requirements. So they sent me, I have a, um, form that I used for fiscal year 18, which we, because we used to handwrite, Tammy and I would handwrite the, you know, the values and send them all out with a label. Now, now I have it set up where it pulls the information from a spreadsheet. We just fold it up and send it out. But what he sent me basically was a, the wording that they would like us to put in there. It's a little different it, it covers pretty much everything, but it's 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 a little different about doing it while you're still in um, preliminary certification. He also stated to me that they would like to see the uh, typical or average percent adjustment on the letter. And again, that's going to vary by class, but I can give a, an idea of what should be there. His his question was: some communities do old value and new value. We're not required to do previous value and new value. What do you guys think we should do? Do you want both or do you want to keep it with just the new assessment? Either way, we're going to get inquiries by mail, email, well, phone I call. If the information is readily available and you can put it in the mail merge, mm -hmm. and maybe we'll save some phone calls. And I said the same thing. And, and not only that, some field advisors Re, you know, require different things. And I said, we've always done it old and new. I don't know if I want to change it. You know I mean? Because yeah. Sammy and I are going to get phone calls galore saying, what was my previous assessment? Why not just put it on there so people know? And then they'll, then I'll just put a little blurb saying this doesn't, this increase doesn't necessarily mean that that was the increase for everybody. It will vary by location and it will vary by the, the style of home that you have. And I think when we cover those things, they also said that we don't have to give a two week public disclosure for running short on time. They only require a one week. But the way I look at that also is by time they get in the mail, you know, if they were to go out, let's say on a Friday, most people aren't going to get them until the following Friday. So then there goes the week and they're going to get a letter and they're going to call us and say, what? You didn't even give us enough time to inquire about this. You can always inquire about your assessment. You know, this doesn't close it down to a two week period at any time during our preliminary certification process. You can always ask what your assessment is going to be. And what we should do is um, provide a list. Maybe we can put it up at the library. 
put it on the website. And that way we will cover, I believe everything that they're looking for, for the public disclosure part of it. My fear right now is if we don't get those in the mail, I mean, we're coming up to mid-October going into November without being even close to getting to our classification hearing. So if we can get this done, and then all of a sudden our preliminary certification comes through, we're already a step ahead. And I didn't know you could do it ahead of time, but they said, yes, absolutely. Um, Semi-annual communities like us, we don't, we don't have the luxury of going into the next year thinking about this. This is, we've got to get everything in, the, in a row to get that bill out before the end of the year. And that's what we're trying to do. And I, and I believe what he'll probably ask me for as well is to submit my new growth at the same time, which doesn't typically happen until we have final certification, but that's an easy enough thing to get ready. So he'll, and he's also the same person that reviews the new growth. I'm not anticipating any issues so far, so good. It's the review has been fine. And you know, we're, we've, we've basically gone through the um, literally the preliminary steps. If they st they've already certified our sales, so there's no going back on that. Which means you really can't change valuation. So this was it. So there's no way that we can really change valuation. No, not as you know. Again, preliminary versus final. If if we were to get a phone call from someone and we discovered that okay, this is just something that, error. that cannot wait. Right, that cannot wait until final certification. The state has no problem with that. That's this. This is the process. They're not going to step in and say, "Oh, wait a minute." They're going to be like, "Okay, all you need to do is document what change you're making." And then we submit our final LA-4, that's what they work off of. So that is this process. There are some bigger community cities that actually do sit down reviews with, with you know individuals, but they also have the luxury of having four bills that go out a year, we have two. And again, I, I know financially we're okay, but we're a semi-annual community that and again, taxpayers may, may not be looking forward to a tax bill, but it is our what we have to provide as a service to get that tax bill out before the end of the year. Once the classification is scheduled, it's literally a matter of a week before we can get those. You know, So at this point, I believe the way things are going, we will most likely be scheduling, and again, don't hold me to it. I'm just, I'm just trying to, you know, throw this out there. If things go as planned with the preliminary, it will be scheduled, I would think, in the beginning of November. And tax bills will definitely be going out in December. And when did, when was it last year, just as a basis for people? Last year, the bills went out at the beginning of November. We also weren't in a reval. The last reval that we were in for fiscal 18 they went out late November. So it's not that far off. Unfortunately, what happens is you get this late in the game, your hands are tied because we're not the only community that's doing a certification and they're coming in left and right. And this, you know, one person is covering 12 different communities and trying to keep a handle on what is required for each one. I've had my information submitted for three weeks, going on four weeks now. And it's, there's nothing I can do to push it forward. It's when they're ready to review it and they know, they know we're a semi. So we have to, you know, we cannot push this off. Um, the only way of pushing it off is doing a preliminary bill, which has not been brought up at all. They're confident we'll be able to get the classification in and get the bills out before the end of the year. I am too. So um, anything that I feel could steer us away from that. I will update you guys, but I, I don't think we're... So going back to the letter, are you going to mail the letter early? I want to have the letters ready to go by the end of the week. So do you need a vote from the board or are you just going to do it? No, I just, we don't need a vote, but I just want you guys to, to be aware that we should probably get these out as fast as we can. And that way, once we get preliminary, we just almost skip a step. We're already there. And Tammy, and Tammy and I can get a, a jump on the, um, you know, the public's concerns and questions, and get that going. It's it, I feel if we wait until we get preliminary, we're th we're pushing it like two weeks now, and this year is just flying by. And I just feel like why not get we're ready to go with those the the labels everything literally is just redo the letter 
punch it in, the file is there, and we will vet the list a little bit because it will go out to everyone outside of the Stockbridge zip code and the Glendale zip code. But those also will entail people that have peel boxes, that, you know, that like the ones over like on Quiet Knoll that they're so, Lennox. They don't, they really are a part of our town. So is there any reason why we don't send the letter out to everybody? I know it's not required by the state. Um, the only reason that we don't is because the, it, they, it always comes back to, well, if you're close and you're in town, you can come into the town hall and look it up. That's always been the, they only require that it's, typically it's only second homeowners, but because again, our tax list is so varied, you know, it's hard to tell if, even if they're not on our personal property list for a second homeowner, perhaps that was one that we missed. So, you know, there's not a lot of those ones that are Lennox or West Stockbridge. I think we, Tammy and I can go through, pull them out. I think right now we're talking about 932 letters that are going out. That's huge. I mean, that's, that's still a big number. And a lot of phone calls, a lot of emails that the state wants us to address, you know, before we get final certification. And final certification basically is all you do is you send in a form called an LA-10. And basically what that is, is they only want to know the properties that you change the values more than 10% over your preliminary number. And I don't think I've ever submitted one of those with a change since I've been doing assessing. Do again, doesn't mean it, it can't happen, but, um, you know, because there are some big changes and it's going to be hard in one letter to cover the types of changes that we've made from the real estate market from last year. But that's what the letter's for. If if it's not enough, give us a call and we'll explain what we did and what the state required us to do. You're also gonna put the file on the website. Yes. For locals, if they want to, they can go also go to the website. Yep. Like yeah, and it'll, it'll have the old and the new value and most likely be in there, you know, by name or we can do it by location, whatever. It won't be the actual spreadsheet, but it'll be a PDF of the spreadsheet. We'll get that out there. And typically I bring a couple books up to the library, old to new listings. Tammy will have the, the reports on the counter for people to look at. Uh, with all the resources that we have with emails and everything, I mean, whatever information you wanna see, we may not necessarily be able to send the record cards at this point until we have our final, but we can absolutely tell people what happened, what we did in that area and go from there. Cause this is, this was a, the, the biggest amount of change that we've ever done okay. in the values. And the office is open Monday through Friday from? Nine to four. Nine to four. Yep. I'm there, I mean, Tammy is in also in the um, town clerk's office, but if I'm not here, she'll get the information for you. So that covers um, two and three. The CL1 forms for the chapters were due uh, October 3rd. And you don't have that list. There are a bunch that did, have not come back. So we'll send like it. Three or four. Like yeah, there's not a there's lot. Not I didn't bring them with me today for you guys to sign. I thought let's send out a reminder. Um, and then at our next meeting, you can start signing them and reviewing them. We do have a few that are renewals for a 10 year forest management plan that have come in, um, in which Gary is gonna have to sign off on um, the form for that. No liens that have to be adjusted. These are just the renewals from uh, chapter 61 forest management that have to be renewed. We have the contract for the um, the new conversion to be able not the not the one for the the sketches yet that that's coming, but that's the one for because I'm on Vision Eight to be once we're done with the valuations to be able to put that new all that new information the record uh, what what comes from our record card the new fiscal year 23 value on access GIS mapping. We can't do it right now because they were exclusively working now on the version eight conversion on vision and it's $1,800 to do the program change, which will be done by uh, CAI whenever we're ready to do it. 
and I'm going to be calling them this week, telling them that you guys have seen the contract, will sign the contract. That way they can just call me up and we can do it over the phone because I won't be able to update any, not only the valuation changes, but any of the mailing changes that come through too. Yeah. So that's the first one that we'll, we'll be discussing the one with the sketches at a, at a later date. But And so just to be kept and obvious, so this website is going to have all of the old data. So, so people are looking for the new updated data. Right. Do not go. That's, to it'll have the fiscal year 22 information that is at this point old information. Right. And we technically can't put it out there yet until we do this change. Um, I haven't sent in the Berkshire County Assessors Association annual fall meeting notice. I didn't, because I didn't know if you guys wanted to go. Tammy's not going. It's at, it's on October, tw Thursday, October 27th at Proprietor's Lodge. They're going to have the Bureau of Local Assessment representative, Jared Curtis, and the Berkshire County Retirement Board representative, Sheila Libera, to talk about um, Berkshire County retirement. I, I will say we had a little bit difficulty coming up with topics for, because I'm on the board, coming up with topics this time around because everyone is so, all of our reps are so busy doing certifications that it's hard to get them to come out. We were trying to get Jim Podolik, who does our tax rate, he's now living out at the Cape, but still working for the state. So that would be a long haul for him to come out. So I just wanna know if I need to send this in by the 20th, if, if anyone on the board wanted to go, just tell me. It's a um, continental breakfast and lunch at noon. And it, it goes from 8.30 until 1.30. I don't know if they're handing out credits. I hope they are um, for this, but there really isn't anything educational on here. They're just gonna give us updates about what's coming um, through for, uh, Jared will present the tax rate forms and what the Bureau of Local Accounts is looking for when submitting into Gateway. There are a few changes on Gateway this year uh, for the recap. We now have to, you know, page, three of the recap when we show the actual receipts and or the low, the actual receipts and what we're estimating for the new receipts. Now we have a, a drop down box on every single item. I think it's great. Mike thinks it's great where you have to explain what you're doing. You know, if you're if you're increasing it by a million dollars, the state wants to know where is this coming from? What account is this coming from? Is there a um, article from the town meeting involved in this increase? So. It's just a checks and balance. I think that's the only thing they're requiring. We'll we'll talk more about the overlay um, the closer we get to the um, tax classification because that may be something that and Mike might want to be in on that conversation as well because of the uh, exemptions that we've talked about increasing next year. Well, if it's if it's May of next year, I. I don't know if that would be the, for the next fiscal year and I'd have to find out or if it would be for the existing year, but we go up until April 1 and our meeting's not until May. So I'm assuming that we can keep the overlay where it is and be safe for fiscal year 23, but I would have to talk to Mike and, and Cheryl about that. That'll be at, an, at another meeting. So that meeting was on the 26th, did you say? 27. 27. Yep. Did anybody want to attend? All right, no. Okay. Uh uh, Mike, uh, I assume there's no uh, virtual option for this meeting, is that correct? No, um, we've tried that, but it, it all depends on the place that you go and if they offer, you know, if they have good, last place we had it, they barely had internet service. So it's always, you know, it, we've tried it and we've set it up like that before only to be disappointed that we couldn't get it running the day of. So we've we've opted out of doing the the Zoom right now. And just out of interest, uh, what's the COVID uh, protocol for this meeting? Is it masking or? Um, I don't know yet what the lodge requires. I know for our meetings, the the one that we had in the spring, there was no. You know, if you wanted to wear a mask, you wore a mask. But it's, I can find out, but it's, it'll be dependent on 
what they what their protocol is at the at the restaurant and i've been there you know not too long ago and they really didn't have any protocol at all as with most restaurants at, at this point but i can find out tom well it's not a huge deal for me but uh i'll let you know uh, a little later this week it sounds all right like yeah okay that's fine i probably won't submit it until next monday okay and uh, Tom, I did put down on the agenda number seven. You told yes, me to. Um, I'm glad you put that down. I, okay. I have an update. Uh, as uh, Peter Strauss knows, who I see here, hi, Peter. Uh, we will be reconvening uh, on the 20th of this month at 4 p.m. It will be our first uh, meeting in a while. Uh, there's still some uncertainty of whether on the timing in terms of not-for-profits still sort of trying to get back on their feet and navigate their way. But uh, we now that we've had a summer of at least more activities in the not-for-profit, we feel that it's probably time to try to finish up our, our work. So we will uh, meet uh, in a town hall on Thursday at 4 p.m. Uh, on the 20th. I'll be posting that uh, either today or tomorrow. And after that meeting, uh, I and other members of the committee who wish to join me will <coughs> end uh, the following or a following board of select board meeting to inform them about what we've decided to do in terms of our timeline and wanting to finish up this project or if they still uh, feel that it should be done this year. And uh, we'll keep everybody posted. Uh, okay. Right now, the uh, members of the pilot committee include myself and Jay Bykowski, who's been with us from the beginning. And our two newer members are <coughs> Peter Strauss, as I mentioned, and Roxanne McCaffrey, who remains on our, on our uh, committee board, um, even though she's no longer on the select board. Uh, we will probably be, among other things, exploring uh, ad adding new members. And uh, we'll keep you posted from there. Uh, finally, I'd just say that Jay Wazalewski, who was our intern uh, while he was a student at the UMass School of Public Policy, is continuing on um, to to work with us uh, so the as a as a consultant so his participation uh, continues and he'll certainly be key in helping us write up the report uh peter is there anything you'd like to add at this juncture no not not on this um i i have a reaction to some things that were said before but Maybe that should await the public comment period. Okay, thank you. Um, I think that's it. So they can go into public comment. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, here we go. Um, I, I, there was some skepticism um, stated not letting Stockbridge residents know by letter about the preliminary um, changes in the assessment. And Mike, you said, these are the largest changes that you've experienced. And given that fact, I would think that, that it would be worthwhile for you to send letters to everyone in Stockbridge whose assessment has changed, as well as second homeowners. That's not how the public disclosure period works. The, the way it happens with the state, I mean, we've had increases before over the years we, we have, because the town hall is open and we have available sources for people that are local to look it up, we don't typically do that. I understand what you're saying, but that's not part of the public, yeah. what the state requires for public disclosure. I, un I understand that it's not a requirement. That, you've made that clear. Right. But yeah, I don't think you should limit yourself to things that are requirements. But it, it's also- At the very least, I think that you ought to uh, put out a broadside that everyone will get that they that people can come in and look at town hall or the library and my guess is that that will produce 
really quite a flood and you'd be better off sending letters. You know, the problem, too, is that, you know, we do things based on what we've done historically and we start introducing changes to the system. And if we mail it this year, we don't mail it next year. Right. It becomes an issue. Uh, it's an increased cost to the town. I mean, so this is what we have done historically. This is what the state requires. So I think that's what Michael's sort of saying is that we don't really yes. want to change it. We are putting it on the website probably for the first time. Right. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it is being publicly available and you can view it from your computer. You know, you can come into the town hall. You can go to the Stockbridge Library to look at everybody. So, in other words, it's it's not it's not that we're hiding behind data. It's just no. that when we're when we're changing the way we do business, we better make think long and hard before we start changing standards. So, well, will everyone know that it's on the website? And which website are we talking about? The town's website. It'll most likely be a link right on the front page. We haven't designed that part yet. We, you know, I still have to, um, you know, discuss that portion of it. But you know, this isn't anything unusual that we're doing. Um, it's not as if assessments haven't increased before, and the accessibility of our information is more prevalent than it's ever been. So oh, I, I don't, I, I don't feel that, we, I, right. I, I don't feel we need to send lot. a letter. I appreciate that a whole lot. The issue is whether everyone in town has the same knowledge about how to find this information that you are providing directly to second homeowners. Well, the thing is also, this is just part of the process. Your actual tax bill is your notification of your valuation. That is when you can actually, the only time you can file for an abatement. So there's, you know, th this is not where you're filing for an abatement. This is where you're inquiring about what we did. And we're, we will explain what we did at any time. There isn't a time frame for that. We're following protocol where it's so late in the year. And in order to get a tax bill out, this is the protocol that I feel we need to follow. And I understand what you're saying, but we're, you know, at this point, it, this, we're following what the state requires to get this whole thing done and get it in a timely manner if not you know i mean because it's also sending out letters to every single person when we're only required to do a two one or two week period of public disclosure that will put us behind i mean we're, we're talking about going into november now where we're not even close to having a, a date set for the tax classification hearing so we're you know we're not trying to i get what you're saying we're not trying to hide anything. This is just a matter of we need to follow what we need to follow in a timely manner in order to get to the next step. Yeah. I mean, so, things are things are evolving. I mean, just like you mentioned earlier, we used to have to put it in the notice in the po in the um, the paper. Right. That's not, not a requirement. It's not a requirement. Anymore. I would be I would venture to guess in, in five years, we will not be mailing these letters. They'll all be available Probably. on the website and they'll all be able to buy And it's people. not just this portion of it. That's a, there's a lot of things where that is, you know, you need to sign up for something, you go to the website. So sending out a letter to every single person, I don't feel is a requirement or needed at this point because we're also offering so many avenues in which you can find this information out and we're very open to discussion on this. When will the information be on the website? That will be determined when I speak to the Department of Revenue when we're when they finalize, we have to actually send the letter to them and have them finalize it before I actually do anything with it. And I'm hoping that's either today or tomorrow, but it's going to be, you know, either the, uh, next week or the following week when we have that out there. So we'll, but it, it, it will eventually be there. It's, it, it's coming. We're just, again, following protocol and making sure that every step, we, anything that is a snag is going to hold up the classification and the tax rate process. And we really don't need that to happen right now. And the next meeting is going to be October 24th at 9 a.m. And so mm -hmm. at that point, hopefully it'll oh, be up. Definitely. Or we'll have more information available. Oh, definitely. Yeah. If we don't, then I'm then I will be scared at that point that we're <laughs> really um, you know, not getting that stuff done quick enough at the state level. But again, it's out of my hands. It's in their hands right now. Peter, did you have any more questions or comments? No, that's that's it. If 
if the uh, information is going to be on the website before October 24th, that's, that's fine. John, did you have a question or comment? Um, so John Hart, by the way. John Hart, Rattlesnake Mountain Road. Um, yeah, I came back from being out of town for about two weeks to find a bunch of really restless natives um, with regard to the residential tax exemption. You know, I haven't fallen on either side of the fence with this, but um, I, I know that Michael is pretty steadfastly against the residential exemption, um, but I'm just wondering overall. Me? Yes. I haven't said anything this year about the residential yeah, exemption. I mean, how rumors don't mind. But at any rate, um, can there be some clarification as to what's good about it and what's bad about it? How, how about what's, what's bad about changing it? I don't, I don't particularly so, want to so, talk about that. Yeah, right I mean, so, so the thing is, it's not a board. I mean, so the assessors, we are a board, but we have no say, quite frankly, in this, in this issue. Um, I personally am on the fence about it. Um, I, I am not necessarily um, for it. I, uh, again, it is a, a tax that does benefit local people, but it's also a progressive tax that goes against people of higher assessed homes. Um, I think I'm not a big fan of taxation without representation. Um, I mean, for all of those reasons and more, I am not really for it, but I haven't made a decision. May I, may I say that it is not a progressive tax, except in the sense that locals get less benefit if they have really valuable property, but every single second homeowner pays more than the equivalent first homeowner, and that's not progressive in my book. Well, so Peter, it would be progressive if everybody was a local, it would be a progressive tax. So it's, so it's almost a double whammy for a secondary homeowner that has a high value house. That, that's my point. It's a double whammy for every second homeowner. <laughs> well, they, every they get, second homeowner well, pays $2,213 more on the, on the a chart that Michael put up than the equivalent first homeowner. It's a double whammy across the board. Yeah. Michael, you said that... Um, what you had seen this year was unprecedented in terms of the change in real estate market and so forth. With last year's sales. Right. Um, do you suppose by any chance that that might be people who are coming to town because they like town so much and they're from elsewhere? I have no idea. I don't know what their intentions are. All we all we do is we look at that we look at the deeds and right, you know that that you know I, I mean it's my job to interpret what happened if we're having an issue with a particular sale as to whether we're going to use it in our study, but you know I, I look at that as you know who's selling the properties to the second homeowners the locals are. So I mean, you know, th this this was an opportunity for a lot of people to make a lot of money um, in right. one year, whether you're a local or a second homeowner. Right. So, well, I, I live in one of those highly assessed houses, and I am a, a local, so I I'm not speaking with any personal issues here. I just have always looked at the um, the people of the town as kind of getting screwed, frankly, um, whether they sell their homes or whether they don't sell their homes, because it is not them that is running from, you know, um, Meadow Lane up on 183 to Church Street and spending a fortune on a house. I mean, it's, it, it's kind of like they sit there and they say, OK, well, what, what, what about us? Are we chop liver? And I can understand where they're upset. At the same time, I can understand that there might be, you know, consequences that are, that are um, obvious consequences with the second homeowners. <clears throat> I frankly know quite a few second homeowners who support it and who don't really who don't really care. They happen to live in Beachwood, and I don't know what their assessed values are. But well, I would say they're probably in the minority. Right. I want to. I'm sure they are. But I just. I mean, I've listened to their argument. And their argument holds quite a bit of water. Um, 
And, and their argument is, yes, we came to town. Yes, we increased the, the assessed value of people's houses. And that's just the way it goes, tough nuggies. Well, it ain't tough nuggies for, you know, the lady who's 80 years old and who is living on a fixed income. You know, I must say that I don't think that the majority of second homeowners are living on a fixed income. Right, but there are the, the whole point of the discussion of the other exemptions is to pinpoint who you're talking about and make sure they come in and look into everything that's available. Right. And I think that's great. And I also not, not, a, not a very divisive form of, you know, I, exemption I for everybody. I understand that, but I understand that the law says that you can go 10% to 35%. You know, has there been any look like at around 20, 25%? I have no idea. Again, this is something that the, the selectmen pursue, and they're the only ones that pursue it. Yeah, and the thing is, we haven't been officially requested anything from the select board. So as a board, mm -hmm. you know, we are doing our day-to-day -day work, and and we're staying in our lane. I, I understand. Um, I've, I've had people say that they've crunched the numbers, and they just don't see how there's any benefit to the second homeowner. I, I have not crunched any numbers. Anyway, that's all I have to say. Anything else? Yeah, I don't know. There's more than. Yeah, Anita Schwerner, I don't know. Okay. So, is there any more comments from the public before? <clears throat> if not, Gary, would you like me to read this about entering into executive session? Or you want. We can't break out. We'd have to call. I don't think we can break out. Oh, that's right. Okay, that's right. Okay. Well, so we do have motor vehicle exemptions here for everybody to sign. So they can, and then this agreement has to be signed. Right. Gary, would you be able to stop in? Yeah, I just have to uh, just double check our, my clearance. That's all. Okay. All right. So we won't go into executive session. Yeah, we can't. Okay. So I make a motion that we adjourn the meeting. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for attending.